Greetings, my friends. Today, allow me to invite you to go on a journey with me to explore this latest design and magnum opus of Brother Nathaniel, aka the Level Lens work, the Ultra Heretic Wooly Knife. We're gonna go on this trip uh, through the Skylift to Mount Pilot of British Columbia. And hopefully, we can uh, go on a sort of a visual tour of this gorgeous Umi knife with the equally gorgeous picturesque background. This is the third Umi knife Brother Nathaniel had sent me. I have reviewed the previous three and done extensive test cutting on a pork shoulder last year. Check out that video, link in the description below, and we're gonna put this Umi knife through the same test. You can check out the review video of the first Umi knife Brother Nathaniel sent me. Hopefully, together, we can learn something about Bui Knife's histories. So, Brother Nathaniel, aka the Level Lens, is a sword and knife designer, generally partnering up with Perna Danau of Great Gurkha Cookeries to implement many of his novel design ideas of swords and knives. And he has personally designed dozens of different Bui Knife and Cookery models for Colonel Danau to implement. And this ultra heretic Mark II is his latest iteration of performance series boom. As you can see, this is quite an impressive large knife, 15 inch long blade and over 20 inch long overall lens. So that's uh, 51 centimeters for all of you using metrics out there. Comparing to several Bui knives model, probably Nathaniel sent me before. Um, some are extremely broad, some have very distally tapered blade to be light and nimble, yet still perform extremely well in test cuttings. This one is sort of the pinnacle, combining all of the experience that Brother Nathaniel has got from his previous iterations. It's one of the largest Bui knives uh, of practical weight on the market. This one comes in at 620 grams, which is 1.37 pounds uh, for the size. Obviously, it's extremely impressive. Uh, pretty much a short sword length, as you can see. It has a very aggressive, almost hollow ground blade from the spine all the way to the edge. Also, it sports a very dramatic degree of distal tapering. At the base, it's relatively thick at 7.4 millimeters, and it tapers down to 4.5 millimeters uh, at midpoint. From this clip point onward, it takes some uh, increasingly uh, rapid distal taper, and tapers down to less than two millimeters near the tip. So, with the edge almost parallel, the spine. It has a very broadening profile, so this very pronounced distal tapering helps a lot to uh, distribute the mass along the blade. So the overall of the knife is relatively lightweight for its size. Also, if you look at the point of balance at four inches from the hilt, so this is ideal for both cut and thrust, so you have uh, excellent control of the fifth and can be very precise, yet the rotation is very rapid. You can reach the terminal velocity with the blade very easily, and it doesn't uh, strain the wrist or the elbow when you swing it. Uh, also, it's easier to carry with a lightweight overall blade. And you can see scabbard has a snake skin texture. Uh, this is uh, imprinted onto the skin, it's not really Snake skins, cow leather. Uh, you can see it has a traditional three points uh, buckle to tighten the blade. It has two suspension straps to hang on your belt at your side. Um, the overall weight is very reasonable, coming in under 800 grams, so way under two pounds. Carrying this all day around is not uh, fatiguing. You barely feel it. Uh, it's your side. 
And you can see when I stand up, it rests easily at my hip. One of the elements that sets this model apart from uh, one of the performance series Wii that Brother Nintendo designed before is its very intricate hill design. As you can see, it has a very elegant dragon motif throughout the entire hilt. And even at the base of the blade on the castle, it has a copper inlay of a flame pattern. So this uh, goes well with the overall dragon motif, especially at the back of the quillon. You can see a dragon head hand carved onto the brass furniture. And this is a one piece construction of the entire uh, guard and the knuckle bow forming a D guard all the way to the pommel. It's also pinned, you can see the 10 running through the grip, hidden 10, and going through the pommel end of the knuckle bow, so forming a D guard. And you can see, even though the blade is relatively straight, uh, has a slightly curved edge, it has a very nice contour in the grip uh, and along with the uh, texture on the inside the palm side of the grip it forms a nice contour a dragon the grip is made of american hardwood and it has carved pattern to simulate dragon's belly and scale on the side you can see it has a swell in the center and as this brass gold plated brass bolster here to emulate the dragon wing and you can see the one piece gold plated brass furniture with hand carved dragon's head and this risen d guard or knuckle bow and this recurve on the pommel. So the blade is relatively straight, but the grip has this contour, this curve and then recurve to look quite elaborate. Works perfectly with this risen design. On the spine of the blade, you can see the copper inlay. You can see the copper inlay, Bestia proponent, Deus disponent. The polish of the blade is of a high grit, uh, close to mirror polish. The problem of this polish is obviously any scratch will show up easily on the blade. This um, mirror polish. You can see being hand forged, hand ground, the blade has some rippling. Not excessive, but still present. And it has a very smooth singular bevel from the spine all the way to the edge. It has some very pronounced apple seed geometry to make the edge durable overall. The edge is very refined, but it doesn't show up any secondary bevel. You only see the change of angle near the edge of this apple seed geometry. The tip is well formed with this false edge. Um, it has a cross section uh, that optimizes the thrusting capacity. So the blade is also hollow ground to make the portion near the edge thinner to perform well. But this apple seed geometry obviously uh, enhances the durability of the edge.
the next test is going to be performed on four pounds of pork shoulder under double wraps of linen to simulate closing protection. And we're going to test the performance of this Bowie knife against another piece designed by Brother Nathaniel, a modern cookery that has an extremely aggressive bevel grind, has a very broad hollow ground blade resulting in very small edge angles and very refined thin edges. You can see this first swing resulted in a tip cut. So the cut wasn't long, but it went all the way to the bone. The next one landed on the correct portion of the blade, resulting in a wider and deeper wound. Also stopped by the bone. You can see here, it cut into the bone, but not through it. It means the pork and made some bacon. This first backhand cut is another tip cut. You see it cuts the double layer of fabric cleanly, but the tip cut doesn't result in a very deep wound. This is a very committed backhand strike, cut very deep, again all the way to the bone, and you can see, once again, it didn't shear through the bone, but led a very significant cut in this big shoulder blade. Now, the buoy knife cut really well, almost as well as the performance series buoy I tested last year. Not to mention it has two inches more of cutting edge, but compared to the cookery, which has more mass concentrated in the top portion, even though it has a more pronounced distal taper to be thinner, which results in a very thin edge angle. It shears through the shoulder blade cleanly and consistently cut the shoulder blade in half wherever it makes contact with it. So the cookery is obviously a better cutter. Surprise, it's a cut-centric knife. And the buoy knife is more balanced between cut and thrust. Its tip geometry facilitates easier penetration against soft targets. Of course, the cookery suffered a little diminishing after cutting through that thick bone, and I will review that in the next review of this knife. Suffice to say, it didn't go completely unscathed. And comparing to that, the buoy knife has a very robust apple seeded edge geometry which caused the edge to remain pristine after all this cutting through flesh and bone. I will say that overall, the Bui knife will be my choice of carrying, and indeed it can be called the magnum opus of Brother Nathaniel's all design work, as it's extremely balanced between performance and durability, and the handling is extremely well refined, the amount of decoration is just right, it has a good amount of contrast, between the wood grip and the brass furniture is tastefully ornate without being gaudy. The only improvement I would say this buoy knife can use is a slightly higher grit of polish to reflect its higher status. I will give my heartfelt gratitude to Brother Nathaniel once more for his continued support throughout the years and I'm extremely honored to own a piece of the pinnacle of his knife designs. Thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed this review, please like and subscribe.